we're here at the Mary Bay's Community Rain Garden site, which has really just renovated a local park and created these wonderful rain gardens as a way to demonstrate to the community how rain gardens as a natural asset can actually help with water control and water filtration and really just beautify the neighborhood as well. All the water that you see coming down highways and uh, busy streets goes right into our storm drains and right into our salmon bearing creek so it's a real opportunity to actually address you know some of the, the flooding concerns that we have but also the quality of water that we have in our local waterways the function of a rain garden is to intercept storm water flow so storm water is directed into catch basins which then direct all that rainfall into your local creeks if we can intercept that water in a rain garden, the contaminants are filtered out and the groundwater is recharged with base flow. So you have cold, clean water reaching your salmon creeks, reaching your beautiful estuaries and your waterfront rather than contaminated water. And it helps also relieve the burden on municipal storm sewer systems, extending their life, especially in this period of changing climate, changing precipitation patterns. They can make a big difference. In the middle of your rain garden you want to have a bit of a depression to have a sort of almost a temporary containment area for the peak flows and on the perimeter you'll have plants that can tolerate drier conditions and in your depression you'll have aquatic plants almost <laughs> but they also need to be tolerant to being dried out in the summer when you have that summer drought period. It's really good to use native plants, you'll add to the biodiversity of your neighborhood, but it's also nice to mix in a few conventional landscape plants. They are attractive, they have nice blooms, they perform in a nice tidy way. So it's good to have a bit of a mix in your garden. So that's what I've done here. I have some sword ferns and some native marsh plants, but then I also have burginia and spirea to have that, that mix of nice formal plants and the more wild native plants. My friend Mary Bays and I, we thought this park would be a perfect spot for a rain garden because it was always a mucky mess. Sadly, Mary passed away in 2018 and when people wanted to commemorate Mary in some way, some of us suggested that the rain garden would be a good way to do that because Mary was a tremendous community volunteer and so a lot of people came together to plan it and to execute it. We got all the planting done in about two hours. We had a great volunteer turnout. People get really engaged in these activities. It's like a, a balm for climate anxiety, is what I think. When you're in the ground digging, planting, it restores that feeling of hope and motivation for keeping on going. It's a huge improvement for this park and I think it's a great opportunity for the community to really learn about the value of rain gardens. So we're really excited and I think Mary would be very pleased. The more citizens know about the value of rain gardens, we think the, the greater support they will give to their local governments to actually initiate rain gardens all over the city. We think that rain gardens are actually a pathway to resiliency and in times of climate change when there's a, a going to be a lot more storms, a lot more heavy rainfalls and then at the same time a lot more drought that rain gardens can actually be a very natural solution to, to some of these if we can find a way to scale it up. So we can demonstrate that this works but then we can scale it up so it's, it becomes part of the way we build cities. I think that we're going to be much more resilient communities. Mm -hmm.